Um, as we break into a brand new week, it is Monday, or as I like to say, mon yay, because Friday gets all the fun and Monday gets all the sadness where it's like, we have to go back to work, but like, why don't we have that same spirit and energy when we start the week as we end a week? So today I am excited to have my dear friend on, although I haven't seen and connected with you in quite some time, but I feel like we have that connection. So Anne McCauley Lopez, content writer with blogging badass. I was just so excited to say the badass that I I mispronounced the blogging. Um, So, I mean, that tells you a lot about Anne already. Anne is known as the blogging badass. So today's episode, we are talking with her about blogging in particular for your organization. So hang tight. Let us get through a couple of these other um, introductions and we will hear more from Anne. We start every episode, as you know, by saying thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our presenting sponsors. You can see their logos right in front of you on the screen. And of course, you can find all of them on the interwebs. So please do find them. Give them a like, some love, thumbs up. Um, They are here with the sole purpose to help and support you to do more good in your community and for those that you serve. So thank you to our presenting sponsors that continue this conversation. And thank you, of course, to Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. And thanks to Julia for allowing me to continue to stay on air with you. (laughs) It's been such a fun ride. Um, I'm Jarrett Ransom, also known as the Nonprofit Nerd, CEO of the Raven Group. And again, Ann, I am so excited to have you on as we talk to you today and uh, just learn from you. So welcome. Thank you so much. It's a It's a pleasure and an honor to be here today. You know, it's really an amazing thing to talk to you and get your professional opinion. We talk about the storytelling aspect of the nonprofit sector all the time. You got to tell a story. You got to tell a story. But how do we administrate that? I feel like we know that we have to tell stories and we know that we have so many things And I want to talk to you about this value of blogging and and how we can really communicate those things that we might tell somebody, we might share it in a tour when we're doing fundraising, but we just seem to fall down when it comes to really, really going forward with that. So we're delighted to have you here to talk to us and get us encouraged. Um, First thing I want to ask you about is audience and understanding what that even means. Yes. So when we talk to businesses, right, in the for-profit sector, we talk about a target client. And I think for nonprofits, it may be more of a, uh, what kind of a donor do we want? Who do we want to be serving? Who do we want to tell those stories to? And it's really kind of the same formula It's about um, creating value for the audience. So when we talk about telling the stories, for me as a a person who supports nonprofits, for example, I want to hear stories about the people that we've helped. Who are we helping? Where are those successes? So if we're, we're building a house for a family, for an organization, tell us about the family. What's, what's their story? The beauty of creating that written content for the blog is that we can really use it in a number of different ways. We can use it for a, uh, for a blog. We can move that blog to a newsletter. We can uh, do a podcast on the topic like we're doing today. We could do a video and really use that same story in a number of different ways. So it's really, I think for nonprofits, it's who, who are we trying to reach with a particular piece of content or on a particular strategy? Mm-hmm. I love this. And this is in particular, you know, something that I can also see, and I know we're going to talk about this later, is how you might uh, repurpose content. But just as you stated, and there are so many ways to use the elements of the blog to help tell the story, right? And then also to the different Um, you know, donor segmentations, be it volunteers, be it financial supporters, um, you know, I want to say like recipient families or those that are impacted by the benefit of the organization. And I think that's really important. I, in particular, 
I wrote an article about an individual that made a planned gift to an organization because I find that talking about planned giving is often quite difficult, right? I mean, we're talking about what happens after your life here. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's really not easy. And that is where I find um, it's it's such a beautiful story to tell about the impact and the success of someone choosing X, Y, and Z organization right now so that the organization is left still as one of their top priorities. So that is a way in which I personally have used, you know, blogging as an opportunity because to be honest, I didn't really know what other like best way and vehicle to tell that story. Yes. I think that makes a huge, makes a huge impact because you're right. People don't want to talk about what happens after, right. where does all this stuff go? Where does my money go? Mm -hmm. There's a story behind why you choose what you choose and which organization you might choose to, to leave that ongoing legacy. Mm -hmm. um, my husband and I, for example, there's a scholarship program at ASU that we are highly involved in to this day. And so part of our plan was really to sit down and talk and say, how do we continue this legacy? and telling those types of stories and saying, hey, we did it, so can you. Um, and I think from, you know, kind of a, a Google love kind of perspective of being conscious of SEO, search engine optimization, which is a little bit on the more technical side, but it's how people find your website. Um, from that perspective, maybe there's opportunity on keywords that have to do with that planned giving. And so there's real opportunity to get your website ahead of the others or in, you know, on a first page or a second page where people will notice people who are looking for those ideas and say, oh gosh, this is a great organization. And we're just thinking about maybe doing some planned giving. So that's another piece of it as well is as you're looking at the strategy, what, where are their opportunities on the more technical side too? So are you saying that you as a content developer, you know, you in writer, you bring in some of these SEO elements into the article and into the blog itself? Yes. Yeah. We can do some keyword research. We can, there's some great tools out there that are either free or almost free, where we can really see how does that website rank and where do we have opportunity? It may be, and for nonprofits, you know, sometimes there maybe isn't a budget for a new website every year or two. You don't necessarily need that. We can play with some of the content that's already on there and um, add some of those keyword elements. Honestly, Jarrett, that's one of my favorite projects to do because you see, you kind of zhuzh it up and you make it prettier than it already is. I love and that it, word, zhuzh it up. <laughs> up <laughs> and, and really bring in those different opportunities for keywords. So not only are you telling the stories, but there's this other kind of behind the scenes aspect to it of this is how our website is being found. Yes. Wow. You know, I appreciate you saying that because I think that's one of the things that with this vast opportunity to connect with people, you have to start with the word vast and you have to understand there's just so much out there. And so what is it that we're gonna do that we can actually make sure that people are seeing, um, not just responding, but seeing the work that we do. And it, it's really a, a huge, huge challenge that um, I think that you need to address. And you talk about consistent content and then repurposed content. And I'd love for you to kind of share that, what that means. Like, you know, I'm guilty of going on a website and looking and saying, well, they haven't posted anything for so long. Whether or not that's good information, I tend to make a value judgment of whether or not it's good. And I automatically say, oh, it's old. It's not going to be any good. Mm -hmm. And that's not great. No. And there are some things like turning off the dates that can make it you know, like maybe it's a little more current than maybe it is. Yeah. When I think about consistent content and as I talk to my clients and we say, what does that mean for you? I say, okay, well, we could post twice a week. We could write two articles a week, one article a week. Really, it's the consistency of how often it is good for you and your organization. How often, you know, if you're hiring someone, what can you afford to pay them maybe? I don't know. 
uh, how easy it is, is it to get in touch with their clients and get all of the sign offs to use maybe their name and their, their picture and their, tell their story. There's different elements to it. So maybe consistent is once a month and you write one article for the blog that goes in the newsletter that we talk about on a podcast or on a YouTube channel. Maybe we get a tour of that house you built for that family, whatever it is, we're really using the same thing over and over and over. And that's repurposing what we're doing. Um, if there's, as we look at the impact then of those particular stories and we look at, okay, there's a fundraising season for our organization. Right. Then maybe we want to talk about you know, some other, you know, ways to give type of host or, um, you know, things like that, that are consistent with whatever the season is. So the plan might be a quarterly plan of topics or a monthly plan of topics. It's really about what can your organization do? And as a member of a board now, <laughs> uh, there's a lot going on at nonprofits, a lot behind the scenes that we don't know. There's you know, the wish list of things you'd always want to have. And how do we create content around that? How do we say, we want folks in the East Valley to volunteer in addition to our West Valley team. And we want to celebrate the West Valley while building the East Valley. Well, that takes a lot of people <laughs> and we need people. So how do we create content around that idea maybe? Mm -hmm. um, and use that content on social media and in all the different places that we've talked about today. Yeah, especially as, and I know in particular more so during COVID, you know, our depth and breadth has really expanded. So as we cast our net, it just goes so, so far beyond our local community. And we've heard from so many of our national viewers and, and guests talk about how they have attracted yeah. donors, supporters, bo board members, even volunteers from other regions of the nation and just, you know, even international. So I can imagine bringing that element of a complete geographic scope, right? It's like it's all in there, plus the kitchen sink when it comes to opportunities of engagement. It's now, as you're saying, you know, in your particular community, we're talking of, you know, one side of the, the town from the other, but now we're working with organizations that are literally become global when it comes to their reach and their scope. And that I'm assuming, and has a much, you know, I don't know, more more creative way to really bring that into blogs and writing and, and how you repurpose that information. Have you seen that trend as well? Yes, yes. There's, uh, you know, on the for-profit side, there are networking groups that have been hybrid or on video for so long that yeah. we now have, like, I have friends around the globe now, which we right. didn't have before COVID, to your point. So uh, in terms of nonprofits, I would imagine, as you're saying, it's, it's a similar. So how do we create content when we can't say the local area? We want to create more kind of worldly content, really. Um, th there's some different things that we can do. And I think it goes back to the technical, you know, how good is the content and how optimized is it for that Google love that I call it? Just where do you fall on those Google results and uh, getting creative with it? You know, I could we could write about, um, you know, generic nonprofit terms, or we could write more specifically about what is your nonprofit doing and who, who are you needing or, or who are you serving? We're serving the underserved in seven different countries or whatever it is, you know, across the United States. So yeah, it's a little bit more of a challenge, but it's possible to do for sure. So well, yeah. I, go ahead, Julia. I've got a question about um, this in terms of you've got your, you know, your content and you're understanding the process that you need to follow your keywords. What about imagery? How important is that to have some sort of uh, video file or still photography with all of those posts? Uh, that's important. I think the, the, more important for getting found is to make sure those videos are SEO optimized, search engine optimized with keywords as well as the pictures. Okay. Uh, like the idea of, you know, your your nonprofit has a brand, right? Like that's your business. So why not have photos that are all similar in terms of their aesthetic? 
Um, because it, it makes it more pleasant for folks to come to you. And if you're searching for those, you know, and who isn't right, a higher end type of donor, we want to make sure that when they visit your website, it's, it looks good in addition to being found by Google and everything. So it's very, very important. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Cause you know, we talk about blogging and to me, um, it just seems that it's all verbal and that we are, we are kind of, um, omit the visual aspect of it, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? which is not good. Jared, I interrupted you. What no, I mean, I wanted to ask, so when I think of a blog, and I, I always think of it like housed on our website, you know, it is housed on our .org for an organization website or .com um, or dot .whatever these days, right? There's so many different, uh, <laughs> after, what comes after the dot really, you know, is, is up in the air. How might you bring blogging in, and I know this isn't really a point of conversation, but I, I feel like you already know where I'm going, into like LinkedIn and some of these other social media platforms, because to Julia's point, my personal website, my business website rather, I've kind of stopped blogging there and I publish articles on LinkedIn. How does that work for nonprofits? That will, uh, we call that backlinks. What that means is we're we're writing not on our own blog and linking it back to our own website. Google loves that. It it shows them that there's value to what's being written. Um, if you link it to a few articles on your website, say, um, or within, you know, on your own blog, linking it within there, that's super valuable as well. I think too, it shows it it reflects authority. You know, hey, I'm I'm writing here. I'm writing on LinkedIn. I'm writing on Grant Station. I'm um, linking back to my own website, and I have some authority that they've invited me or allowed me to publish elsewhere. It's super. It's super important. Um, and I think too, as as the nonprofit grows and as uh, you know becomes more well known, that becomes even more important, right? Like we want to have the that whether it's PR in a newspaper or on a grant station or on LinkedIn, the beauty of it is, um, it, you know, you could write an article in a number of different ways and change the words, but the idea is the same. So if you're like, oh my gosh, I really need to write about this. Let's write about it on a number of different websites. And that's your, your authority. That's your expertise there. Um, but it is, it's super important. So is there an equation, and I want to say that you might have told me it was like 20%, 20% of the original content needs to be changed for it to be, I don't know, seen as a new article? Re-educate me on that. <laughs> it is. It's, okay. uh, wow. they say about 30% of the article, changing okay. about 30% of the article. So if you're, I think it's 500 words, it's what, a paragraph? you know, change your intro and outro, that kind of a thing um, would work. The other thing that I've learned, because I've been studying up on all of this, because it's always changing, right? Like, right. We, don't, we know the rules today. I didn't know that the rules changed last week. And so I, I sat in on a webinar about SEO and getting found. There's mm -hmm. a website called Medium. And I don't know if you've explored this at all, but there's a way to import a link like from your own website to Medium and it will say originally published, but because it's a link, it doesn't affect, it's called a duplicate content on Google. It doesn't affect your duplicate content because Medium then knows because you imported the link, right. it knows that the original content's on your website. So you don't get dinged for it. Right. Yeah. Super simple, right? You don't even have to rewrite anything. <laughs> you just import the link and figure it out on Medium. So I thought that was really interesting. And I just learned that and I'm you know, I do this all the time. So I think there's opportunity there for sure. Well, it's constantly changing, but like you said, so 30%. So I'm going to fess up. I have absolutely used and our paths have crossed probably a decade now ago. Gosh, may, maybe close to a decade. And, um, and so I've pulled Anne in for some of my own business needs. She referenced Grant Station and we, yes, together, we were on like their top I want to say seven or 10 list on a couple of years in a row. So, Anne did just that where I was like, you know what? I have so much content 
from 20 you know, years of being in, in this sector, 10 years of being a business owner, how can I use what I have to my better good and, and repurpose this? So yes, you definitely helped me with that. And it's been so phenomenal. And so I would love for you now, if you would, Anne, share a little bit about how we as you know nonprofit leaders might engage with a blogger or a content writer, because oftentimes I feel like we're, we add it to our list. We'll, we'll do it. Are right. we to that, right? But right. it's really how do we engage other people to help us in our blogging world? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. My best clients are the ones that are that are busy and understand the value of content, for yeah. profit, nonprofit, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I remember sitting with you, Jarrett, and you're like, I have all these ideas. And that's <laughs> what happens, right? Everybody's got a list. I have a client. And she will bring it up in the middle of the night and say, here's what I came up with. I was up in the middle of the night, make it pretty. And that's how I signal to, you know, go and do my thing. Uh, And I think that's it for nonprofits. Connect with a writer and say, here's what we have in mind, or we don't know where to begin. I had a client come to me and she goes, I have all the words, but I don't know where to put them. (laughs) Oh, wow. Wow. So in, in essence, if you like have, let's say, um, you're a food bank and you want to talk about um, what are the foods that you need for a particular time of year? Are you saying like, write it and you'll clean it up? Or are you saying the best way to go is to outline, like, what are some steps that somebody can take to move themselves towards a finished product? Sure. I think it's, um, if you're hiring somebody, connect with someone who can, who has a process in place. So I do, okay. I in a couple of different ways, I can take those emails. I could interview you if you're like, listen, I just like to talk. And I find that uh, now that we've all been on video, that that's pretty common these days. We could talk about what we do and, and where we want a project to go. So that might be the easiest way is, hey, let's get on. Let's have a conversation. And typically from there, there are keywords that you're saying that you don't even know you're saying. And really like for your food pantry, it, it maybe it's quarterly that they have different needs quarterly or monthly, right. or it's yeah. back to full time. So we need pencils and pens, but we don't need them all year or whatever um, to understand that and then come up with a schedule. I think you could do it yourself as well. There's a little bit of organization. I typically just keep a spreadsheet. There's other tools out there. There's Airtable and, um, oh gosh, the one with the cards, Trello. Yes. which not my jam at all, but that's really? another one, guys. <laughs> hey, I haven't tried it, but I've heard good things about it. So it's it's important to know your jam. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. So there's different tools for different learning styles out there where you can organize. And not only that, but share it with your team and say, what are you talking about over in donors or fundraising or marketing? Like, where are we all going with this and really organize it? Um, one of the other things, that I do, and it really seems like it's like the 2021 thing is to take podcasts or video transcripts and make those Google friendly. Um, And that is, I've been doing a ton of that. I wrote some scripts last summer out of my comfort zone. You know, I hate it out there, Jared, but I did it. And it was Uh, great. I sent it to them and they said, oh, no edits. I was like, what? Because they sent me basically like a recipe card, I call it. Like it's the outline. mm -hmm. And I wrote those scripts exactly what they wanted, delivered them. And they were like, oh my gosh, this is great. I was like, thank you so much. I have no idea what I'm doing. (laughs) Right, right. You know, and it's an interesting thing because one of the words that I keep, your keywords, I keep hearing you say, and we don't have a lot of time left, but I keep hearing you slide in the word plan. Mm -hmm. And I find this is a really interesting thing. Um, Talk to us a little bit about that because so often in our sector, we are a reactionary, you know, structure. I mean, we deal too often. <laughs> to, yeah, to a fault, to a fault. I mean, uh, we are wired to like, oh my gosh, this is a problem. Okay, let's go. This is a crisis. But I love that you've kind of slipped in this concept that you can forecast what it is you should be doing. In some sense, yes. I think if you have your list, your plan mm-hmm. of what you want to publish. You say, okay, we're going to publish once a month. And then one of those opportunities comes up, 
let's do a second article this month. Let's do another podcast or another video and allow for that. Don't be rigid in, in that plan or in those keywords. We know where we want to target, but we also recognize because it's, it's a moving target, right? The, the industry is moving. Right. The nonprofit sector moves fast that we have to allow for that space. So maybe we say, Hey, Anne, we're going to do one a month. Sometimes we'll do two. Mm -hmm. I had a client who, uh, through COVID, they were, they placed travel nurses and other medical professionals. And so we allowed space for that. She's like, listen, we're flying by the seat of our pants. I might just throw you an idea and let you run with it. It might be more, it might be less. And I'd check in with her and we just ran with it. We knew we had our two a month. And then some months we did three or four, we wrote three or four articles because people wanted the information. What do you do when you're on the road as a nurse during COVID? I didn't right. get all of these contracts. If you want to get out of it, what do you have to do? And so we we operated like that. So I think um, I think my word this year is grace. Give yourself grace. And I think as an organization, right, we can all give ourselves grace, and and you can plan, but also plan for those times when something happens and you want to get the word out. Right. Does that right. sound familiar, Julia? I know. <laughs> yeah. That was my word to Julie. Uh, uh, yeah, like, I mean, it's give yourself grace. Give yourself grace. Give our, you know, my own self grace. All of us. We just, you know, we've been navigating really hard times. And as I say, plural pandemics, right? We had the global virus. We had social um, injustice and, and duress. We had the political climate, which has, you know, clearly been a huge divide in our communities. Um, and then, you know, the environmental crisis that we're all really enduring or maybe enduring at this time. So uh, just so much, but you're right. Like, and so what I heard you say, Anne, is as much as we can create a plan, realize that sometimes we are a fly by the seat. Things happen, right? We all have to course correct at some point in our life, either personally, professionally. Um, I have used Anne on a couple, several occasions, actually. And sometimes I'm like, look, my brain does not have like, a conscious stream of thoughts. It is like there are squirrels and shiny objects all in my brain. <laughs> and yeah. she's really good at, you know, creating this really single file parade that it makes sense. And it's like, here's it a squirrel. Out, Jared, I got it. <laughs> yeah, here's a squirrel. Here's a shiny object. Here's three more squirrels. Like Anne is really good at that, uh, which is why she's the blogging badass. And uh, so, yes, if you're interested in talking to Anne, she is phenomenal. I have read so many of your works, Anne, from financial articles to nonprofit articles to you wow. name it, uh, the housing market, a little bit of everything. So you are very versed and uh, I think you're phenomenal. And if those of you that want to reach out to Anne, want to see how it might, you know, look and work for your organization to create a blogging plan and how that um, can give you some Google love. And you can also repurpose some of that content uh, for the betterment of you and your community. Please do reach out to Anne. Absolutely. Yes, it was phenomenal. Fun. Everyone should be on the show. <laughs> I know. And I wrote a couple down. I was like, oh, here's an article and here's an article. So I had squirrels flying from my brain just during this, you know, quick 30 minute episode. So I will certainly be in touch, but I love um, the idea of blogs and how we can integrate them into our entire marketing communication strategy as we continue to tell the good works that we do out in the world. So thanks for sharing this, this information with us. It was very rich. Amazing. You know, um, I, I love so many things what you said, it kind of puts together a lot of pieces. And so I think that um, you might be my new best friend. I'm definitely going to think about some of these things you said and um, chat with you a little bit more in depth. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Been joined today by the nonprofit nerd herself, Jarrett Ransom, CEO of the Raven Group. We want to make sure that we do thank all of our sponsors. Without you, we would not be here having this amazing discussion like we have with Anne uh, today. It is remarkable that every day we get to share with you the great minds of, of this sector. And that happens because of these sponsors. So we want to make sure that we express our gratitude. Fundraising Events TV is a new program that we're doing. Check us out. A lot of fun. Talking about how you can maximize events for your nonprofit. 
Um, our host is Jason Champion, and he's a lot of fun. Hey, Jarrett, love the way we kicked off this week. Oh, me too. I told you it was going to be a money because Friday gets all the fun. Um, and so this was a great week. We've got so many amazing guests lined up this week as well. We have Juan Kingsbury, Mary Gleason, so many amazing conversations to talk about for the organizations in which you serve. So thanks for joining us. I hope you'll join us again tomorrow. Until then, as we end every episode, please stay well so you can do well. See you back here tomorrow.